And this morning, a case of the Mondays for some small cap tech and big pharma stocks off their highs for the year. Doug Roberts is Chief Investment Strategist with Channel Capital Research. Yuri Landisman is President of Platinum Partners. Good to have both of you with us. Uh, we appreciate it. So, Doug, let's start with you. Um, you're saying the big, the big pharma. Make, make the case for why to get into big pharma right now. Um, this is a group that, well, it doesn't always get big pops. Yeah, but essentially what you're talking about, Aaron, is you have a, basically a group of stocks that have made a transition, a very, very slow transition from growth to value. They're all incredibly cheap based on growth. They've had a huge overhang from really the Obama you know, health care legislation. And there's been negative consensus patent expiration. So you're making the argument that everything has been built into the stock price, all the bad news, and that if there is a change in, let's say, leadership, even if it's only in one house of Congress, uh, absent tomorrow, that you're going to have probably at least a transition that regulation will not get any worse in this area and may even have a positive improvement, which could pop on the spot. So Merck, Pfizer, Bristol are what you're talking about. Yuri, what about you? You're, you're, you're into the health care idea, but a totally different area. Well, what we're really into uh, are a couple of different things. Within the healthcare space, uh, we like a microcap company called Neoprobe, uh, which has a very exciting nuclear medicine drug that tracks uh, the progression of tumors through the lymph node system. And then more in the classically tech space area, we're very excited about a, com a company called Converse Technologies, which essentially is at the point of liquidating itself. One of the pieces it's going to sell is its uh, ownership in Verant, and we think that Verant is an attractive opportunity as well. Uh, Doug, I want to return to this issue of pharma and regulation. I, I'm assuming that you're talking about perceptions will shift after the election. Yeah, absolutely. Because, because the, the regulators will not change if the Republicans take control even of both houses of Congress. The yeah. regulators are still in the executive branch responsible to the president, although the Congress can call them in and browbeat them. Yeah, and also you have one other thing, too. There has been speculation, albeit only speculation right now, is that uh, some of the funding for the regulatory authorities, some of the enforcement may actually be limited by Congress if they can't actually pass some of the votes to override. And again, that gets to your point that you're talking about a change in perception in terms of that, which could lead. And then you combine that with the fact that a lot of these stocks are cheap. And one of the big things for the three pharma names that I've mentioned is you're talking about dividend yields in the 4% range, which given in the current environment, the advent of QE2 could be quite attractive. And unlike, let's say, some of the other industries out there, some of the other companies, these dividend uh, basically are pretty secure. It's not something where you're going to have a problem. And the regulators may say you have to cut your dividend. And Yuri, you, you also are uh, it's kind of a theme along with Doug here of uh, unrecognized value. Uh, let's go back to Neoprobe. Mm -hmm. You think that they could become the target of a bidding war as what you, it's kind of a double barrel here. The, first, there's a delay in approval from the FDA, which do you expect them to get? And second, that they could be part of a bidding war. Right, Mark, the stock dropped recently from about $2.10 a share down to about today's $160. Uh, it looked like they were going to get some sort of fast-track FDA approval. The FDA said instead, no, we want to do a full uh, review pursuant to our latest regulations. The stock, people got nervous about it because it's going to delay the approval about three months. But actually, this is going to give them a broader approval. We think once this happens, uh, there's a company called Covidian uh, that is very interested in this space. We think they're going to get involved. Uh, Neoprobe actually has has a distribution agreement with Cardinal Health, Covidian's main competitor. We think those two companies get into a bidding war for Neoprobe. All right. Thanks very much. Appreciate it.